you glad that he come to set us free break our chains we don't have to stay with the same old stuff all the time but Jesus is the one who can break us free I'm gonna ask the prayer team if you would make your way up here uh, you know I know a lot of you have been in service with um, uh, Brother Bentley before and, and you know he has a powerful ministry and of laying on of hands and and um, uh, he, I'm sure he'll offer that uh, as well. But uh, if there's needs that you, you want to come and have agreements on right now, that, that's fine as well. Uh, either now or at the end, How, however you want to do it. God is here yes. and he's ready to meet us right. now, later, tomorrow. He is always here, ready. You have chosen me 
and love has called my name. And I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my
savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him
After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah. Salvation and glory and power belongs to our God. For true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah. The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God, who was seated on the throne, and they cried, Amen, Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude like the roar of rushing waters and like loud pearls of thunder shouting hallelujah for our lord god almighty reigns let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready fine linen bright and clean was given to her fine linen was given to her then the angel said to me right Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. God, we thank you. We gather around your throne today as we worship you. And we join those 24 elders, Lord, in shouting hallelujah. Praise be to our God. There is no one else who is worthy of any ounce of worship except you, O oh God. You created the heavens and the earth. You created new life for us through the sacrifice of your only son, Jesus, upon the cross. And we are benefactors of that. We, we, we receive that and we share that with others, Lord. And we just thank you so much for allowing us the honor and privilege, not only of, of being called your children, but of having a place in heaven waiting for us you said do not be afraid do not let your hearts be troubled i go and prepare a place for you you've got a place ready for each of us and we thank you lord right here and now we're going to give up having troubled hearts we're going to quit that stuff it just tears us down and makes us depressed you have called us to have freedom you've called us to have peace you've called us to rise above this and not have troubled hearts because you've given us many promises in your word promises for here and now and promises for the future so it's senseless to worry it makes no sense in light of your word so help us to walk in that freedom and that joy we worship you we worship you God from the bottom of our hearts thank you so much for paying the price for all eternity for us to enjoy eternity we give you glory we give you praise in Jesus name amen Amen. Thank you. Be seated if you can. I knew there's a reason I grabbed this. Uh, praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Not sometimes. All the time. Praise God. We're glad you're here today. And Yeah, there you go. We're glad you're here. Let's bring this forward just a little bit more so he has a little room. There you go. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, so anyway, um, we're going to take up tithes and offerings right now. And we've been talking in, in uh, this foundations class over here about the importance of being good stewards of what God has given to us. And this is a joyful occasion. This is a time when we give. We get to give. We don't have to give. We get to give. We get to give to God, and because and, and, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, and we, 
and we made a distinction. We do know that, um, that God loves us all. Whether you give or not, God loves you, okay? But when it says God loves a cheerful giver, what that means is God takes special delight in those who give with a smile on their face and joy in their heart out of what God has done for us, okay? There's no way. We're not paying back God, okay? You know, because there's no way we could, we could pay him back. But we're doing it because the word says so, and there's blessings associated with the giving. So we're just going to do it, you know, for that and just say, God, thank you for the honor and privilege of giving. So ushers, come on down. I'm going to shove this forward a little bit more. And we'll bring it back in a minute, okay? Got to have room for the kids up here. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. If you have your, well, I've got mine here somewhere. If you have your, your tie check or your, uh, or your offering, let's just, just, just hold it up right now. Father God, we, you see what we have and we're, we're giving to you, Father. And you promised in your word you will, you will multiply it back, press down, shaking together and running over uh, into our bosoms, Father. And we just thank you so much for giving to us the honor uh, uh, and for the, the, the finances, the blessings you've given to us, and we give back to you, Father. Not because we can pay you back. We're not trying to pay you back. There's no way we could do that, but we're doing it out of obedience to your word and out of joy and love for you, and this is an act of our worship to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Kiddos, come on down. And the winner is... <laughs> All right. Say it one more time over the microphone. Me. Jesus. 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 All right. Woo. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Try to do that one. Praise God. Well, listen, I'm going to ask the little kids, little, little ones, to come in the, the middle. Little ones. Little ones. Um, come here, kiddos. Come here, come here, kiddos. C come on over. Come on over here. Here we go. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I got a little funny story to tell you. Can I tell you a little funny story? When I was pastoring a church down in Texas, I called all the children up. And we all know that song, or I think most of you know, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves all the children of the world. Okay, have you ever heard that song? Okay, if you know it, let's sing it. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in the sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. So we got done singing that song, and I said, okay, who, who, are, the white, who are the white people? I said, well, we are the black people, you know, uh, you know, black people, uh, you know. And I said, who are, the, who are the yellow people? And one, one little girl raised her hand and said, um, Martians. <laughs> so I said, no, they're green. <laughs> but just know, Jesus loves not only all the children of the world, he loves everybody in the world. He died on the cross for all of us, okay? So, so you need to remember that Jesus loves you more than you'll ever know. I know mom, your mom and dad loves you and, and your brothers and sisters love you and all that, but nobody loves you more than God, okay? He sent Jesus. <laughs> okay, Renee, you still love your daughter even when she gets in trouble, so I just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wait and see. I kind of edit things sometimes when I, should I share this or not? That's a good one. But anyway, unconditional love, that's called, and that's what God has for us, okay? So I want everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes. Bow your heads and close your eyes. I pray God's blessings on you. Father, I bless these children, all these children, Father, and I thank you for them. What an inspiration, a blessing they are. And I call forth the gifts that you have given to them and the callings. I call forth pastors, preachers, uh, teachers, evangelists, uh, missionaries, uh, Christian businessmen and women, Christian moms and dads, and, and I call forth all the gifts of the Spirit 
that reside in them because of your presence, O oh God. And uh, I pray that you will help them to know that you have given them a call, that you have given them gifts, Father, that they need to be expressing even now, that they don't have to wait to become an adult, that right now they are your ministers, Father, and just use them and help them to know that they are mighty men and women of God, even at a young age. And we give you praise and glory, and thank you for all those that work with them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you can go downstairs now. There. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, we, we indeed have honor and privilege. Oh, I got one more announcement to make, by the way. I wanted to explain this little ditty here. I know there was an announcement up on the thing, but you all got a piece of paper on your uh, chair. And uh, you all have gotten the message. You know when the date is. So what this is, is for you to just put that in your brain. No, that's, that's the day we're going to give away the coats and other winter items, and we're collecting them. But take this and give it away to somebody that might, might need it, might need to know, okay? So, so give this away to somebody once you file it away in, the, in your brain. And uh, it's, it's just a nice little handout there. And we're going to be handing these out, by the way, at the bread shed uh, uh, this coming Saturday, so so a lot of people will know know about that. So um, the Bentleys have been longtime friends of Pam's and mine, and and uh, and we just we just appreciate the whole family. And um, and uh, as you probably know, Geneva uh, passed away not long ago, and so so uh, uh, she she's here. We just can't see her. I think maybe she maybe maybe God has pulled back that veil just a little bit and had her peek peek in down here. But uh, anyway, we love all the whole family have for many many years. Um, uh, Pam and I have been members of WMF for 25 years, and um, first time we went to a convocation uh, down in down in Texas, we didn't know anybody, but we did hear about uh, a man by the name of David Bentley because uh, he's preached revivals around this area long before then. And so, so we went down there not knowing anybody, but the first, when I first got there, we started asking around, where's David Bentley? Well, I want to meet David Bentley, <laughs> you know? And we met David, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, right away we just, we just hit it off and, and have had a great relationship with them and the whole family uh, from that day forward. So praise God. He was the... Uh, Executive director for WMF for many years, ten years or something like that, but on the executive board uh, forever. And uh, and uh, so anyway, he's 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 a great and mighty man of God, and uh, the whole family is. But Dwayne, his son, uh, is going to bring a special at this time. So I'm going to call Dwayne to to come on up. And uh, Dane is uh, Dane. Dwayne has traveled a lot to, uh, with with David and even gone to foreign countries and and uh, to minister, and so praise God. Brother? Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you all inviting us for really our first uh, outing since Mom passed. This uh, family has really gone through some uh, tough times over the last uh, year. You know, some uh, changes, not only with Mom passing, with Dad's sister passing, uh, there were a couple of changes in uh, in our ministry and uh, uh, some other things that Dad may go into. But anyway, you know, in spite of the changes, the story still stays the same. Jesus is there for us all the time. <laughs> I said I wouldn't do that. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, God is great. Go ahead and start the song. How can a story from so long ago make such a difference in the world that I know? 
when I heard story of God's only Son in that moment it felt like my life had only begun the unchanging story it's always the same every time I hear it my heart seems to Open the Bible mm, that is tattered and worn, and you'll still find the message with the power to transform. Will it take a heart that is so hard? And moves it to tears Takes a life that is so scarred And wipes away all the fears The unchanging story It's always the same time I hear it, I feel my heart change, yesterday and forever, it always will be, the unchanging story. It's still changing me Doubters will tell you You'll never receive Darkness will sell you It'll try to deceive That child on his knees Lifting his voice Crying Lord, I believe The unchanging story It's always the same I feel my heart change Yesterday and forever It always will be The unchanging story It's still changing me Well, yesterday Say something. Say there something. you go, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> I love pushing people's buttons. All right. The unchanging story, I still don't know nothing about this stuff. You know.
You know, he sang, and uh, I just love Dwayne. He traveled, he said, all over the world with me in Geneva with Mama. And uh, I have to pick on him every once in a while. You know, that, uh, that song said something about to open your Bible just tattered and worn or something like that. Uh, I thought, you know, probably there's a bunch of folks in here that don't have a Bible with them. They got their cell phone. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with a cell phone except I was thinking as he was singing that song, and, uh, you know, I shouldn't be thinking too much, you know, but anyway, I was thinking, and I thought, you know, people come to my house, and they see Bibles laying all over, and they know what I am, a Christian. But I remember wondering how many of them come in and see my cell phone sitting on the dining table if they even think about the Lord. I mean, just think about that. And I also thought, once again, I got a cell phone. I don't know how to use it, really, but. <laughs> but I also thought about the fact that the cell phone is taking the place of a lot of things, and I wonder a thousand years from now, a hundred years from now, fifty years from now, if you're going to even be able to use one. And all the documentation that's in that thing is going to be useless. You know there wasn't even a cell phone 20 years ago? There wasn't. I thank the Lord that this has been around a long time. I thank the Lord for it. Now, I'm not knocking you. I'm not like Tracy Harris. Tracy Harris said one time, when I tell you to hold up your Bibles, I don't want to see your cell phone. <laughs> he carries a cell phone now, by the way, so. <laughs> anyway, I tell you what, folks, I'm really proud to be here. I really am, and I have to be a little bit honest with you. I'm just a little bit nervous. I was in the habit of preaching five or six times a week. And suddenly it shut down. You know, things happen, things happen in your life that changes it in a hurry. When Geneva got sick and we found out she had terminal cancer in the lungs, everything shut down except caregiving. You know, I miss a lot of things about it. And I don't want to talk too much about her because I'll just go to crying. And that's all right if I shed a few tears, ain't it? But I'm not trying to make you that way. But she did everything for me. She picked my clothes out. I told the kids, I said, you know, I've been married 68 and a half years when she died. We went together four and a half years before that. We started going together uh, when he was in eighth grade. Now, I didn't recommend that. Ours worked. <laughs> ours worked, but there's so many like that that don't work. But ours worked, and I've never bought a shirt, never. I've never bought a pair of pants, never. My mom and daddy bought them, and then Geneva started buying them. <laughs> when I get ready to go somewhere, she would color code my suits with a shirt and tie. Hang them with together where I'd know when I get there, I, this is the two I'm supposed to wear there. So if I'm not right here, it's not my fault, it's her <laughs> fault that she didn't pick this up. <laughs> I'm just telling you now, you know, I miss her. Yeah. And so, but the last thing, that, one of the last things she told me, she said, David, you was called into a worldwide ministry, don't stop. Mm -hmm. yes, there you go. Don't stop. A lot of other conversations we had. I got my notes here, and I was supposed to introduce them, but they've already been introduced, so my kids I'm talking about. Gayla here has taken over pretty well where Mama is, but she's got her own family she also has to look after, but she's pretty well taken care of that. The boys are doing it too, but boys are not as good at taking care of a situation like this, because I'm a boy now, I know. Not as good as the girls are. This is the first time I've preached since she got sick. That's what I'm saying. So, that's enough on that.
for now. I'll probably bring something else up. Turn with me, if you will, to Philippians, the fourth chapter. And I don't care if it's in your cell phone. I don't care if it's on your Bible. And I don't care if you just sit there and let me read it to you, because I'm going to do that anyway. Philippians, the fourth chapter, out of the King James Version, verse number four through verse number nine. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanks, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Let me stop there for just a second. I don't, didn't mean to, but when it says there, be careful for nothing, what that's saying, God is saying, just let go and take a chance. Ask. Throw caution to the wind. That's what he's saying. Throw caution to the wind, but in everything in prayer. That's what he said. Make your request known unto him. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. I said I was going to stop on Geneva, but I want to just share this one thought with you. She actually went to the hospital on February the 13th or 19th, which one, one of the 13th of this year. And in just a couple of days, they told her she had this cancer. And uh, she was in ICU, intensive care unit. And uh, one morning, I, every morning I was at the hospital. I left usually anywhere from 9 o'clock to 10.30, and I was back at the hospital by 3 o'clock every morning. And I got in ICU that morning, and I found out first thing. As I went in, one of the nurses told me that your wife has been singing. She got the Holy Ghost on her, and she began to praise the Lord. In I see you, and actually the songs were actually ministering to every patient in there and every person that was waiting on them. And the nurses came in and told her, don't quit. Don't quit. Because it's helping everybody. I got in there. Well, she quit after a little bit after I got there. And she started preaching to me. Now, a long time ago, Geneva said, if you won't sing, I won't preach. And she didn't always keep her part of that bargain, but I can't carry a tune in a bucket to tell you the truth about it. But she started preaching to me, and she preached a sermon for about 30 minutes. I wished I'd have taken notes. I didn't have time to even open my mouth. And the sermon was peace. Wow. Wow. You know, we, all of us, run into Christians and non-Christians alike all the time. And as we run into them, we find people that don't have peace. They're in turmoil. They're in uh, stress factors that's going on in their life that are creating major problems within them there. They're nervous. They're struggling. They're acting in their own power. No peace. No peace. Verse number 9 here tells us something about that. It says, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. What is it saying here? There's five words there. In that particular verse, it needed to be concentrated on for a few minutes here today. Learn. Receive. See. Hear. And do. 
Learn Jesus' ways, receive Jesus' ways, and Jesus' example. See the things that Jesus do, does, and hear what he say, hear Jesus what say, says, and then do it. Then do it. That's what that verse. And what'll happen? The peace of God will come on you. That's what it says. That's what it says. Ephesians 4, verse number 17, in the message translation, says this. Sometimes I use the message translation because it says some things that we need to hear in a way that it needs, we, need, we can understand it. I'm a kind of a simple guy, and this is a simple thing that it says here, but it has a powerful statement. Verse number 17 in the message translation says, And so I insist, and God backs me up on this, that there be no going along with the crowd, the empty-headed, mindless crowd. They've refused for so long to deal with God that they've lost touch not only with God but with reality itself. They can't think straight anymore. Feeling no pain, they let themselves go into sexual obsession, uh, addiction, into every sort of perversion. But, that's not the life for you. You learned Christ. The King James Version says in that verse, but you have not so learned of Christ. You have not so learned what that verse is talking about. These people here, it says, the word saying, you didn't learn this from Christ's observation, experiencing him. You didn't. This, these folks are indulging in lust and filth and Greediness and uncleanliness and selfishness and all the things that are not of God. That's what it's saying. I didn't say it, he did. The word learned in the Greek means, now first of all, I don't know how to speak Greek. And I don't have the slightest idea what anything means in Greek. I got the word spelled out over here, but I can't pronounce it, so I won't make a fool out of myself because you may have it on the screen or something. But anyway. I heard somebody else say this is what it means. And I do have a dictionary that says what it means. And the word learn means to know or learn by observation and experience. Observation and experience. Let's continue on verse number four, chapter number four of Ephesians in a message. But, that no, uh, but that's no life for you. You learned Christ. My something, now this is Paul saying, my assuming about you. My assumption is that you have paid careful attention to him, talking about the Lord, Jesus, being well instructed in the truth precisely as we have it in Jesus. In other words, you've learned from him. That's what that's saying in that verse. Since then, we do not have, since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance. You know, I was a policeman for a long time, 20 some odd years. And I found out something early in my police career. If you run a stop sign and you didn't know the stop sign was there, that's ignorance. You don't make any difference, it's still fine. Just because you don't know that's the law, that don't mean nothing. The law's the law. Now, that's secular. But that's the truth, and that's what he's saying here. Just because you can't make it to the ignorance. Why? Because you so learned Christ. You've been observe, uh, observing him, and you've been experiencing him. That's what the Apostle Paul's saying here. We do not have the excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it and take on an entirely new way of life. A God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately produces his character in you. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. One that's never existed before. Old thing but passed away. And all things become new. That's what this said. That's what it's saying. It says all of them, not part of them, all of them. When I, when I became chief of police in Camden, Arkansas, 
I had been a police officer in Little Rock for 20 some odd years and went down to Camden, became in a small town, small city compared to Little Rock. And Little Rock's not a big city, but it's bigger than anything else in Arkansas. <laughs> so we call it a big city. But when I became chief of police, I didn't want to go into the smaller town and just change everything the day I walked in there. I had the power to, because I was the chief. But I didn't want to do that, not that way. And so I started having a staff meeting every Monday. And all the staff major, the, the main people of the department was in that staff meeting. And I, we would go through things. We'd talk about what's happened and what we planned and that kind of thing. And plan something and somebody would say, but chief, we've never done it that way. And, okay, well, but chief, we've never done it that way. And after about three months and every Monday, it would say, suggesting some things, but chief, we've never done it that way. I said, listen to me very closely. Be ye not conformed to the old way, but be ye transformed to the renewing of your mind. I am the chief, not the other guy. That's what the Bible's saying here to us. Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How you do that? By learning and experiencing. That's how you do that. It's, a, it's not a, yes, it's, it's spiritually in a way there's an absolute total transformation the moment you accept Christ. But there's also a learning experience. There's also some steps we have to take. Not to get saved, you're already saved. It's something where we're walking with Christ. We learn by observing and experience Christ. You know, when I know nobody in here except when I've mentioned him. There's a man by the name of Tank Harrison that used to be a policeman in Memphis, Tennessee. He was a lieutenant, and when I turned my life back over to the Lord, I got acquainted with him, and that's a story in itself. But when I was around him, I was around a man that everything he did and said, he was exalting Jesus. Whether he was mentioning Jesus by name or not, he was living the life of a Christian like no man I've ever witnessed. He came to our house one time and not long after we got acquainted with him and, and uh, we were going to a Methodist church and the kids were all part of the youth group and, and some way the word got up there, the tank was down at the house and, and uh, the kids all ended up in my living room. And they come in, and Tank was just talking about Jesus. They were spellbound listening. It wasn't a meeting. It was just a discussion we was having. And he was exhibiting Christ like nothing I've ever seen before. And those kids were just eating it up. And they got to praising the Lord a little later. Now, mind you, I'm inspector of police in the city of Little Rock at that time. And that's assistant chief what that is. Anyway, they was making so much noise about 11 o'clock praising the Lord that a, till a young policeman rung my doorbell and I went to the door and he liked to faint it when he saw it me because he knew I was assistant chief, you know. And I said, what's going on? I thought maybe there was some kind of message they're trying to get to him. He said, Inspector, I hate to say this, but we've had a complaint, you are too loud. And I'll tell you what, I learned something watching him. I learned something. That's what this is talking about, observing and experiencing Christ, by observing a Christian working, listening to what the Word of God is saying and being a part of it. And we need to receive Jesus' ways, and we need to see his example in his Word and then do it. You know, that, that word receive is something else. To admit, to let enter, to encounter, to experience. Did you ever have an experience with somebody that you really didn't like? Well, that's part of admitting, and you, you know. 
Right in a crap game. How many of you know what a crap game is? Oh, boy, we need to have an education in here. The crap game ain't nothing but shooting dice gambling is what it boils down to. That's what it is. And gambling's against the law in Arkansas. And so we didn't have nothing to do this Sunday afternoon, so we decided, me and my partner decided, let's find something to do. And we found out about this crap game going on over in this particular house, and so we decided to raid it. And uh, we decided that he's going to go in the front door, and I'm going in the back door, and we put, just like the military people, we put our watches together, and just at exactly the same time, he hit the front door, I'm going to hit the back, uh, and I'm going to hit the back door. And that time came, I'm on the back porch, and come time to hit that door, and that's what I did. I hit it, bounced off of it, you know, just hit it with my shoulder and bounced off of it. It didn't budge. I hit it again, it didn't budge. By the end, it hurt my shoulder, I'm hitting it so hard. I finally said, I'll show it, and I did it like they do in the movies, and jumped up and kicked it right next to the doorknob. And when I jumped up and kicked it, kicked it with all the might that I had in my body, that door didn't budge, and I fell right on my, you know. <laughs> and like Barney Fight, I got up and went around and come in the front door. <laughs> now, that door didn't let me enter it, did it? It didn't admit me, but I have to tell you, I experienced that door. Yeah. <laughs> and I had an encounter with, so in some ways, there was a receiving there. We need to receive Christ, his word, the things he does, and everything about him. Some of it might be kind of dumb and like sitting here listening to me now. Thank you, Lord, I rebuked that statement. Yeah. Receive my word, 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 16. Now the Lord of peace, we're talking about peace, the Lord of peace himself give you peace always. That's what the word said, by all means. Jesus brings peace. Jesus brings peace. I mean, knows where Van Buren, Arkansas is. That's right close to Fort Smith. We was in a lay witness mission there some 40 years ago. The lay witness mission is nothing but laymen coming into a church and sharing what Christ has done in their life. That's what it boils down to. Having a church service like this and then breaking up into little rooms and talking about it. And that's what, on Saturday night, we were having just a great time. The team meeting was all out in the small rooms, and the, it's almost like the Shekinah Cloud of Glory was in every room, and I'm the coordinator of it, and I'm sitting in the sanctuary praying. And all of a sudden, there was a man come bursting through the door into the sanctuary from the outside, and he said, a tornado's coming. And I, for some reason, the Spirit of the Lord identified, this guy knows what he's talking about. And I jumped up and I hollered as loud as I could at a two-story building in a basement. And I hollered, go to the basement, a tornado's coming. And every room where the Spirit of the Lord was so strong, suddenly the spirit of fear took over. Just like that. Everybody run to the basement. And they got down there and was all huddled up in a fellowship hall in the basement. And their brother, David, just retired from 42 years of pastoring with the Methodist system. But he had a strong voice. Still does have, but he had a strong voice and he sang. And I just hollered across the fellowship hall to David to start praising the Lord. And he started singing praises unto the Lord in less than just a few seconds with that praise going out, that fear went right out the roof of that church. Yep. Yep. I mean, that quick did the fear come on us, that quick that fear went out. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Jesus brings peace. Amen. That's right. And that tornado came right up to this church, destroying this houses for Two or three blocks before he got to the church, 
He got to the church, lifted over that church, sat down on the other side, and for one mile took out the, every house and building on that block, wow. that area. Wow. Jesus brings peace and he brings protection. Right. Come on. Right. What that's saying right there. Receive my people, I forgave them. And I healed them and I bring them peace. Duane and I were in Geneva, Switzerland one time. And it was in a church. I'm going to just guess anywhere from 100 to 200 people in there. We knew absolutely nothing about the church, knew there was no pastor. The, the meeting was arranged by a pastor in Grenoble, France. And we were going to fly out of Geneva, Switzerland. And so it was a Sunday, and they got us to church to minister in. We didn't really have time to talk to the pastor a lot when we got there before church started, so we knew nothing about the church. And at the end of the service, when, we gave, when I gave the invitation, we had some people saved. I could feel the anointing in the church. We had some people saved, gave their life to the Lord. And then I asked, how many of you have a need? And there was a personal need, whatever it is. And they were all over the congregation, nearly everybody in there held their hands up. To be honest, you probably would. And said they had a need. And the Spirit of the Lord said, you don't need to pray for them. They need to pray for each other. You know. And I just had them to start praying for each other. I said, you just grab somebody and start praying for them. They pray for you. Pray for a little bit and pray for somebody else. Let's get this prayer going there. Pray for their needs to be met. And in a few minutes, that place was just exploding with tears and with joy and with excitement. And the pastor's mouth was falling open. And he told us after service, Brother David, you will not believe this after what you just saw. But this church was so disoriented, so dis connected. Half of the people was mad at the other half, and none of them knew why they was mad at each other. They just hated each other, disliked each other. And I saw people that hated each other almost, hugging each other's neck out there today, and there was a peace came over that entire church that particular morning. What, I, what happened? They learned Christ all of a sudden, and they received him at that point. We need to do that. We need to see the things that Jesus does. You know, there's things that Jesus does every day we don't see. Right. You ever seen anybody or heard somebody? Well, I can admit it to myself. I've run a red light. Didn't even see the thing was red until I was almost through. <laughs> but it was red before I ever started. You ever see something and didn't see it? Yeah. When these tears hit these glasses, I see the glasses. But otherwise, I'm looking right through them. We look right beyond it. We need to stop sometime and see Jesus and what he's doing. Yes. Yes. He said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right. John 5, verse 19, amplifies. So Jesus answered and said to them by saying, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, the Son is able to do nothing of himself, of his own accord, but he is able to do only what he sees the Father doing. Now stop and think for just a moment. If you've never thought about this, I want you to think about it. Everything that Jesus did, walking the face of the earth, he did as a man. He didn't do it as God, he was the son of God. That, I don't take away from that. But he did it as a man. He was the son of God. And he was baptized in the Holy Ghost. At the river Jordan when he come down. And he was baptized and the spirit of God came down. And God touched him with the power of the Holy Spirit. Took him into the wilderness. or in, You know for, to be tempted. And he was in there for 40 days. And according to Luke, the fourth chapter, the 14th verse, he came out of that wilderness, what? In the power 
of the Holy Ghost. Not the anointing. You ain't got that anointing yet. The 16th verse of Luke 4, two verses after he come out with the power, he went into the synagogue where he was studying the word, where he was fellowshipping with believers, where he was believing God, where he was at that point doing what God's telling you and what he's telling me to do, and that is fellowship with him in, the, in every way possible Jesus himself had to. Two more verses, Jesus says, I am anointed. I am now anointed. When? When he was observing God and what God was doing. As a man, we look at Jesus and we see him touching the untouchable. We hear Jesus, you know. Matthew 26, Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and we hear Jesus says, Not as I will, but you will. Not, not that I will. God, I wonder what your will. Have you ever done something like that? Geneva and I held a meeting in Morehouse, Missouri, one time. And we was there for a full week. On Wednesday night or Thursday night, we got back to the travel trailer we were staying in, and Geneva said, why are we here? They don't want us here, and we don't even want to be here. My simple answer was, God told us to come. And that's what I was saying. I said, not my will, but yours. We really didn't know. Well, I will make a long story short. We later found out there was one man that we was there for that whole week for. One man. God touched him. There, how many of you know where Fairview Methodist Church is in, out of Puxico? There's a few of you. Well, we was holding a revival over 30 years later. Everybody in that church at the time was there. There's 10 people. And we held this week-long revival with 10 people. A few of you guys from over here in Poplar came, Poplar Buff came over there. But on this particular night, the last night, we sat sitting there, there only about four or five of us there. Time to start. Two vans pulled up outside the church. And they come in, two van loads. Where were they from? That church in Morehouse. 30 years earlier, they had heard us in that church. We thought nobody got touched, and half of the church come over there 30 years later. Why? Because they heard we was over there. You hear what I'm talking about? I'm talking about God is doing something out there. Whether we know it or not, we need to open our spiritual eyes and see that he's still operating. He, you know, he's healing people. He's meeting their needs. Mark the second chapter in the first 11 verses is that it's this man is let down. We talked about one this last night. This man was pausing, and they let him down. They couldn't get in the house. There's so many folks there. He was on a stretcher, and they let him down through the roof, down in front of Jesus. And the Bible says in the fifth verse, he says, Son, thy sins that be forgiven thee. Forgive his sins. Then drop down to the eleventh verse, it says, And I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way to thy house. Jesus is speaking healing. He spoke forgiveness. He spoke healing. Both. In the desert of Mexico years ago, there was a four, about ten people in a meeting out in a under a, some bushes in a little town village, 
And there was a woman there that gave her life to the Lord. She came up and I prayed for her for salvation. This woman had had a stroke and she was, her hand was locked up to her like that and to her side, she couldn't move it. And as she started to walk away from me, the Spirit of the Lord said, pray for her healing. And I just reached and got a hold of her. And said, I'm, she couldn't understand me. The interpreter told her to stop. And I was going to pray for her, and I prayed, and I got down and got a hold of her hand. I'm going to help the, you ever try to help the Lord out? <laughs> you know, you pray about something and helps the Lord out to make sure he wept. I was going to help him out because... Her hand was locked too, and her arm was locked, and I was just going to help him by pulling it open, you know, and pulling her arm out. Well, just as I touched her hand to do that, I heard the Spirit of the Lord inside me, and I've never heard the voice of God. Don't misunderstand me. Something inside me said, turn her hand loose. And I dropped her hand like it was a hot potato, and I stepped back about three steps from her, and then I heard Jesus say, do the same thing I did. And I pointed at her, and the interpreter did not interpret. And I just said, stretch it forth in the name of Jesus. Stretch it forth in the name of Jesus. Stretch it forth in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, her hand opened up. And her arm straightened out, and she was able to wave it around. What am I saying? See, do, hear, you know, what Jesus is doing. And just do it just like he did. Why? We're serving the same God. And Jesus says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as we do that, we're going to have the peace of God that passes all understanding. On April the 11th of this year, my wife in intensive care already got the word by then that this is terminal. She wrote a letter, and I'm not going to read that letter, but she wrote a letter to her family. And I made a copy of it and gave it to all the grandchildren and, of course, the kid. And she said some things there. And the thing that she struck me with today, I'm just going to read one sentence out of that whole thing. And I'm going to quote it exactly the way she said. Remember who I said she wrote this to, and that's her kids, her family. She said, I'm with Jesus. She had just got through saying, I don't know whether I got a day, a week, month, a year, but I feel like it's soon. I'm with Jesus. I am at peace. Then she said, this is what I want each of you to be. Be at peace. Father, in Jesus' name, I just love you, Lord, right now. I love you with all of my heart. And I thank you for the 68 years I had with my companion. But she's with you. And she's still wishing I have peace and everybody else. Lord, I just lose the Holy Ghost. To go up and down every row of chairs here. And Holy Spirit, I loose you to take every individual in their, your arms and just love them. I pray, Father, that you whisper to them that you're here right now. And that you're wanting that, them to have that peace. And you're wanting them to have that healing. You want them to have that salvation. You want them to have everything that you have. 
Father, I just thank you that you let them know what they need and then give them the boldness to receive it from you. With every mind fixed on Christ, I'm not in secret, so I don't care whether your eyes are closed or not. That's up to you. But with every mind fixed on Christ, thinking about yourself, don't think about your mama, don't think about your daddy, don't think about your children, don't think about your husband or wife or your friends. Think about yourself for just a moment. Be just a little bit selfish for just a moment. And if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, you've never come to that place that you said, Jesus, I believe that you was raised from the dead. And I want to make you Lord of my life. You've never done that. And you'd like to know him personally, not know just about him, but know him personally. If you've never done that, would you just slip your hand in the air? With your hair going, hand going up in the air, you're saying, I want you to pray for me, David. Is there one here? I personally believe there is, but I'm not going to push the subject. The Bible says, lift him up and he'll draw all men unto him. I'm going to look across the audience one more time here. If you've never given your life to the Lord, right now is the time. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, the second verse, it said, today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, if there's one here that has not raised their hand, they don't know you, I pray that, Lord, that they don't leave this room until they've confessed you as Lord before someone, whether it's before me, the pastor, or somebody else in the church, but that they need to say it to somebody. And so I just thank you for that right now. Now I want you to stand with me, please. That's two things that'll do. It'll wake you up to start with. You don't have to stand up. <laughs> if you've got a need in your life, I, I, if you're honest with yourself, now I'm not trying you to give you a trick, something to make you come down here. But if you've got a need in your life tonight, today, and you can believe for just a moment that Jesus is here and he wants to touch you in that need, whether it's physical, financial, emotional, spiritual, whatever it is, and he's here ready to meet that need. And if you'll take a step of faith, now let me tell you to start with, I'm not going to stand up here and talk to you a whole long time. I'm going to lay hands on you. There's going to be very little talking to me as far as an individual because I won't know how to fix it anyway. I can just pray for you. But if you've got that need, I want you to take a step of faith right now. Don't wait 10 minutes from now. Come right now. If you've got a need and you can trust God for it to be met, you need to come right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody help her over here. I'll come to you. Thank you, Lord. I'll just come over there to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on now. I'll wait around. I rose to leave. There's others out there that's got needs and you need to make that step of faith. You can take it home with you or you can bring it up here and leave it. One or two. Thank you. There's no in between. It's one or two. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, that you know every person that's taken a step of faith to come up to you.
Lord, I know that you know exactly what their need is and what they're believing for right now. So I ask you, Father, to touch them from the top of their head to the very soles of their feet. Heal them, Lord. Heal them now. And I thank you for doing that. I thank you, Lord, that I'm, as I lay my hands on them, Father, my faith is with them that this need is met. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Right now, that's it. Just let it happen. Just let go. In Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me.
make one more request. Nobody needs to come up here for this, but I want you to be honest with the Lord. In fact, just so nobody else will know, let's just all close your hand. I'm not, your eyes, I'm not playing secrets, see? But I'm just trying to give you the freedom to do something. If you're lacking peace right now, I don't know what it is that's causing not having the peace of God. It can be a bad thing and it can just be something that's simple. But it's causing a turmoil in your life. And you'd like for me to just, so you'll be a part of this prayer that I'm going to call peace to be upon you. If you'd like that to be for you, I want you to hold your hand up right now in Jesus' name. I want you to hold it up high where God can see it, not where I can see it, but where God can see it. Now, Father, you see all these hands up all over the audience right now that lack peace. And, Lord, we saw in your word today that you bring peace, a peace that passes all understanding, Father, and we ask for that. We ask for it for each and every person here in this room, Lord, that that peace of God that passes all understanding will just overcome you right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor? By the way, uh, don't forget my song. Before you dismiss it. Oh, how I love Jesus. Now, after he dismisses, it's been a while since I preached. I almost <laughs> forgot that. Yeah, it's David's favorite song, Oh, How I Love Jesus. If you don't know it, just move your lips. It'll come, all right? Uh, tonight, 6.30, we'll be right back here again with uh, David and Dwayne. Oh, Dwayne's leaving. Yeah. Yeah, but Dwayne, David will be here and, uh, and uh, Gala. So anyway, come back tonight, 6.30. God's blessings on you. We'll sing I love you with the love of the Lord. Then we'll give Jesus a shout, okay? No. We're going to sing I Oh, how I love Jesus. Go and change the world, and then we're going <laughs> All right. We'll get her done. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. <laughs> Let's raise that up. Let's raise the instruments up. Let's raise everything up and sing. Sing, let's sing. Oh, I love you.